Now then, welcome back to Done in 60 Days. I'm here playing Tech It once again, and today we're going to have a bit of a derping session, I think. <laughs> I think we're just going to have a mess around with things. I've been playing on here today, and I've fixed up a few things. Um, I've not really done much inside the dirty dungeon, uh, but we do have a few things spawning now. Uh, I've got pigmen on a regular spawn. Uh, we've got lots and lots and lots of mob essence. So I can't understand why it's not going down, really, uh, because I'm using it quite a bit. Uh, down the side here, this is where we had all the, the mob essence going into those tanks. And I've got the two white, white, white ender tanks feeding straight into the top of the tanks. Before, we were trying to feed it in along the bottom here, and it wasn't filling up. It was sort of sitting still and as soon as I put it up the top now it's filling up dramatically uh, and these bottom uh, fluid ducts still feed all the mob spawners mob essence just the same as Lewis set it up originally uh, I've got a little uh, route round the back here now I've tidied this back room up a bit and the back behind the on off switches so you can see that cell 2 is currently on because there's no redstone signal uh, they've all got a white, white, white attached to the back, and I've removed all the fluid ducts that were going around. White, white, white ender tanks to grab all of the mob essence as it comes out. And these on this side have item ducts that bring the items down and straight underneath me out behind that wall, uh, which I'll show you in just a moment. Uh, all of these this side are all going that way. Uh, same here. They're all doing the same thing. And over on the far side, I have a, a little entrance just here to get in here. And we have the same deal, but pink, pink, pink ender chests. So all of the items go into pink, pink, pink ender chests from uh, this one, including number five, which Lewis is planning on using for his uh, secret uh, entrance to an area. But for now, I've got a slime in there just so that I can... Uh, do slimes or whatever we've got this it's fully functioning grinder and spawner so I can turn cell 5 on if I wanted with whatever I choose so I've got slimes as a spare but as we've got so many slime balls right now I don't need to use it uh, but if anything else comes up like I want some pork or something I can do that and the pink 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 here is from the enderman farm so pink 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 on the ender chest and white 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 on the ender tanks are now delivering all the goodies all of the mob essence goes into there and all the pink 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 goodies uh, come from this side and go over that side and these all feed directly <laughs> and they're loving it <laughs> uh, I've got this little section just sectioned off here which shows going into the back there and on the other side of the wall this bit looks complicated. Looks like I should have done it in an episode, but I've spent I've spent a good deal of hours today uh, setting it up right and changing it and putting it straight and doing it again and doing it again and moving things one block to the right or one block to the left or whichever way around. And now I'm fairly happy with it as a layout. Uh, we've got cell 3, which is just behind the wall here, that's uh, this one here, has nothing spawning in it at the minute, but it's still got all of the things it needs to come back here. And we want skeletons. I actually want wither skeletons, so we can get wither skeleton heads and things like that. At the minute though, it's a spare cell, so if anything gets used in it, it just goes put into the AE system and goes into the AE network. Um, we've got cell 4, the witch's waste, comes in through pink, 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 as you can see. And this is, this looks complicated, but if I explain it once, you'll probably get the idea, right? So I've got deep storage units, and currently this deep storage unit's storing all of the redstone. And it's got a storage bus above which means the AE system will try and put any redstone it receives into the storage bus attached to this inventory. So this inventory becomes part of the ME network. So the Applied Energistics has, uh, through every terminal over there, I've got access to all the redstone here, all the glowstone here, all of the sticks, all of the sugar, all of the gunpowder that the witches produce. And this just simply pulls constantly 
There's no blacklist or whitelist. It just pulls all items out. And the beauty of the item ducks from Thermal Expansion is it will not pull an item unless it has a location to go to. So, if there's redstone in there, it will pull it and put it into there. If there's glowstone in there, it'll pull it and put it into there. Because these have only got one possible item type in there, it can only go that way. And same with sticks and sugar and gunpowder. And they're all hooked up to the AE network as well, so it's reading the contents of those deep storage units. And then there's this, which is spider eyes and glass bottles whitelisted. So that means that only spider eyes and glass bottles will go into the nullifier next to it. So that's pretty much all of the witch items that can go anywhere going out of pink, pink, pink into there. But pink, pink, pink also has the items like ender pearls and occasionally slime balls if I set that one up. So pink, pink, pink will also just... Uh, that it has nowhere to go. Sl Ender pills have nowhere to go in this little mini network from Pink Pink Pink. So this will not pull Ender pills out of Pink Pink Pink. I'm going to say Pink 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 a lot. <laughs> uh, I'll get to the Pigman one in a minute because I want to do something with that in a bit. Uh, so Pink 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 here. Same again. It's just pulling. No restrictions. It's just pulling. So whenever there's a valid inventory along this route, it will pull an item out and put it. So we've got ender pills, slime balls, uh, blaze powder, sulfur. So the only thing that's coming out of there really is ender pills and slime balls when we're running the enderman farm and the slime farm. And they're hooked up to the AE system, as are all of these for uh, AE network inventory locations. Uh, this, this is like the first one though that I'll show you that's coming out from underneath the wall. It's basically everything from the grinder comes out and up into here. And the only thing we get from blazes are blaze rods. So it's a simple input to a deep storage unit for blaze rods. Okay. And that again being read by the AE system so as an inventory. So all those blaze rods are accessible through the terminal. Uh, now we get on to the interesting bit. Right. I wanted sulfur. And one way to get sulfur is by pulverizing blaze rods. There is a small chance of getting sulfur for every blaze rod you pulverize. So I set up this little automated thing, brought some power along, got some power to this pulverizer. This just pulls blaze rods out of there and into the top of the pulverizer into there, look. Yeah? And then all of the goodies, everything it's got, goes to the left, which comes out of this item duct. So blaze powder goes into there, and there's quite a lot of blaze powder. Uh, and because I don't want um, so much blaze powder, we don't know what to do with it, but I want a little bit of sulfur here and there. I just put a normal strong box on here so I could control the amount of sulfur going into here. So I've got cobblestone to block off many other slots. So there's only two stacks of sulfur can be stored in the system and available through the AE network at a time. And as soon as we use some of this, it will take from here some sulfur and then start pulverizing again so it's a it's a controlled method so blaze rods will stack up in here forever and ever if we're running the blaze farm and as soon as we use some sulfur it will start pulverizing blade rods to replace the three stacks of sulfur that we have left there i think that's pretty pretty cool it's taken me a while to get it set up like that but it's pretty simple it's it's um it's a good setup i'm pleased with it it's nice and compact and tight. Uh, it does the job it's supposed to do very neatly. Uh, but it took me a little while just to figure out the details and get it set up how I wanted. Uh, now, the zombie pigmen are a slightly different issue because they produce um, zombie heads. They produce gold swords and potentially gold armor. They also produce uh, zombie brains. And most importantly, the gold, right? So this item duct comes from the grinder and splits two ways. The first way is whitelisting gold. So gold goes through that side into this cyclic assembler. And this one is saying no to gold nuggets. So it's blacklisted gold nuggets, which means 
the only available inventory for something like a gold sword is to go through this route into the nullifier and get rid. Uh, same with zombie brains and zombie heads and anything else the zombie pigman produce except for gold. With this li little junction here I've got gold going one way and everything else going into the nullifier and just being deleted. Right? Uh, and then I've also got spider eye and zombie brains from the AE system going into the nullifier that way as well. Uh, because you kill spiders and the zombies out in the world and occasionally they end up in the, the AE system and I'm just deleting them. If we need spider eyes for something, like uh, potions and brewing and stuff, which I don't know if we're going to bother going into, but if we need that, then we can just turn it off. We can just stop the spider eyes from going there and just go and kill some spiders. Or set up another little spawner with spiders and the pink, pink, pink will keep spider eyes in there because it's got nowhere to go on this little sit setup. Uh, the gold, the gold itself, which is what we're doing something with today, goes directly into this cyclic assembler, which receives power from below, and it's got a blueprint for nine gold nuggets, making one gold ingot. So every time there's nine nuggets in there, it will use a bit of power, go off the schematic, and make the iron ingot. I did have it so that it outputted on the right, which meant that it put it straight into this ME interface. So the gold from the pigman farm would go straight into the AE system and just be absorbed into the AE system and go and get stored over with the ingots over there, just the same as mining. And they got a fair bit of gold. I mean, this is 25 gold here. As you'll see, when that goes up, bing, there's 26 gold. And it'll just keep killing the zombie pigmen getting the gold nuggets and making gold ingots while it's running, which is cool. But I want to change this out a little bit. I want to take this off so that that's uh, no longer a thing. Uh, put that away for a second. And I want to do something with this gold ingots, right? And it's come from this a uh, EE3, the equivalent exchange stuff that Lewis started off the other day. Well, he started this off so that I could then carry on with it and start doing some automation. And what we've got, let me take this. This is a currently active one. Uh, cyclic Assembler, there we go, we'll take that as well. Uh, we've got to get a bit of redstone energy conduit for that down there. Uh, this system now has got tons of stuff in, by the way. We've got all sorts of bits and pieces and I've got some auto crafting stuff and things as well Let's see redstone there we go I'll grab that so we're gonna put a piece of that down and a cyclic assembler above it uh, like this just there and then the cyclic assembler can go above it there we're gonna currently clear out all of that and just allow it to fill up with power a bit okay uh, this we're going to set to output the gold to the right and this we're going to set to receive the gold from the right. So all the gold ingots that are made from the pigmen are now just going to go straight into this cyclic assembler. Okay. Oh, actually, we'll take some gold from here. Let's take a bit of gold from there. If we go over to a crafting bench, uh, let's do... Let's use the workbench. Why not? Uh, I've already done here that... A minimum stone, which is currently the Nem stone, which I want to change around to get a, a normal one so that it'll be easier to do without having to rename it each time. Uh, and four gold ingots makes a diamond. Just think about that a second. The zombie pigman farm makes diamonds. <laughs> now that's cheaty diamonds. Minim stones. Cheaty diamonds. Wow. We used to do this all the time on Utopia Season 1, and I loved it. So I'm going to take that out at the minute, though, because I want to make a new um, new minimum stone to put in there so it takes one that isn't named. So we're going to need to get some uh, smooth stone, which I think I cooked up over here earlier, even though I could have just gone to the factory and grabbed some. Yeah, there we go. 
uh, I picked them up earlier so that I could just stay down here for a bit. Because I'm just, uh, I'm sort of moving down here now. This is where I'm going to be doing quite a few more bits and pieces around here, especially with all of the galactic craft and stuff. Uh, I'm just going to get this sorted out, and then we're probably going to get started on galactic craft in here and set up our launch platforms and stuff. So, anyway, we want a stone, and it's an inert stone. The inert stone is the first thing that we're going to use, so we'll have one of those, and we'll get that. And then we need some of this um, essence that you make. I don't know if I've got any here at the moment. Uh, no. But it's eight diamonds in one of these calcinators. Let's see, where did I do them? Yeah, there we go. Uh, you put diamonds in a calcinator and it turns it into minimum dust. Right? And then you take the uh, aludal, aludal, and you put the inert stone in, and let's take eight of those, and it will cook up and make you a minimum stone. All right? Lewis did this in his episode, and I'm just taking it that next stage on, that that little bit further, right? The minimum stone, work in progress, job done. Now, it's got a durability, so it's not infinite. So I would need to be able to make this recipe, as it were, and make these stones over and over again very quickly. Uh, that was only quick because I had already prepared what I needed to prepare. Uh, but this is making the diamonds, and that schematic, we write it. Now that schematic is a minimum stone with four gold ingots equals a diamond. So we can clear that off and bring that over here and put that into the cyclic assembler. Now the cyclic assembler is waiting for all the ingredients and when it finds the ingredients it will make and then we're going to make it output the diamonds on the other side. So we'll take that for now but we need to put it somewhere so actually we may as well put it just there. So let's take that off. I want that though. I don't want to lose any of those. And if we put that there, the network is still connecting up so that gold nuggets are still going to go into the cyclic assembler from the AE system. But also, we can have this now feeding up and out. Right? So let me get this um, minimum stone, like so, and stick this into here as an inventory item. And it will just make diamonds out of all the gold it gets and it will constantly be making diamonds so the pigman farm will constantly be making nuggets the nuggets will be made into ingots the ingots will come across to the right into this assembler which will receive the ingots then it knows that the minimum stone and four ingots makes a diamond and then we'll have the diamonds exit top into the ex uh, interface and disappear into the AE system so now when we run the pigmen farm, we're not getting gold. We're now running the pigmen farm to get diamonds. Pure diamondage. Cheaty diamondage from there. The only thing I need to do is occasionally add in uh, a new minimum stone. Which I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to automate that yet. So that's where the derpiness of this episode is going to come in. We're going to mess around with a bit of a E and calcinators and this uh, uh, aludel and things like that to figure out what we can and cannot do to automate making the minimum stones to automate it so that I can just say I want a minimum stone give me a minimum stone and it will give me a minimum stone so I want an auto craft I don't want a continuous production uh, like for instance the the sulfur here I don't want a continuous production, I just want to go, I need a new minimum stone, make me a minimum stone, and it will. It may come down to the fact that I've got to do it so it's a full production and we end up with a stack of minimum stones all the time. But that's a waste of diamonds when we're only going to use one every now and again. Uh, we just need to replace that every now and again. So, this is what we're going to do this episode. So... Let me gather a few bits and pieces. I'm going to be getting stuff like uh, import buses, export buses, and other applied energistics things. Make a few patterns and set something up 
Um, I don't want to set it up just here, just yet. I'll probably set it up uh, out here somewhere. So I'll fix the floor up and all that. And be back when we've got something of s some progress. Some progress. And then I will show you how it works. Well, the first problem is trying to get the fuel into the Loodle. And uh, I'm trying an import bus. And it, from there, that import, uh, export bus, should I say, exporting it in, puts it in at the top. Which is not what I need. So, I'm going to quickly try and do that a different way. I was also trying to import from the bottom there. But now we'll just change that around. Let's try and get the fuel supply in first. So we'll have that there. We'll have an export bus going into the bottom of it. So if I put that up one, will I then get the export bus where I want it? Basic export bus at the bottom. It's normally the fuel location, isn't it? And are we getting anything now? Oh, we've got to we've got to have a visible location for it first. So pop that on there. Now can we get it? Aha! Aha! I have you now. Right, so now I have the fuel going in. So the fuel's got to go in the bottom by the looks of it. Which is fine. Blaze rods burn. I've got a blaze farm. So blaze rods going in the bottom. That's cool. And because that has happened, I can potentially now use an import bus to import from the side slot. Uh, yeah, it's not taking anything like that. So it should be only from there. Right, the next thing then is to... Uh, I'm going to put in the stone at the top. So I'm going to bring the stone down into it from above and have the other stuff going into there. So how can I put another export bus in around here? Let's see. Let's see if I can get it this side. And pop that down here so we're gonna need to have uh, let's just put one of these over here for now we're gonna need to put some actually minimum dust that's what we're gonna want we're gonna want to put minimum dust in there to put minimum dust into it on the bottom slot it's got to be the bottom slot so I've got to find out how to put that into there let's put two in there and see if we can derp this straight into there. Now it goes into the top slot again. So I wonder if I wonder if this goes in from the top. Let's see, shall we? So we'll stack up here and put the export bus on the top, exporting the minimum dust. All right. It won't put anything in yet because I haven't put anything in the AE system. But let's put those two bits in there again and see if the top access point does it. No, it's just put it into that. <laughs> it's just put it into the display piece above. Okay. Okay. And about the back. Let's take it out of there by... I guess I'm going to have to just break it. Let me fiddle around with this some more. And we will see what I can come up with. Alright. I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. So we're importing the blaze rods from our bottom. We are adding in through an interface. This pattern here tells it how to craft. So let me show you. I think I've still got the recipe up here. Right, so <clears throat> I've basically told it an inert stone and a minim, uh, an eight minimum dust equals a minimum stone. Now that technically isn't a crafting recipe, but when you encode it onto a blank pattern and then put the pattern into an interface, uh, the AE system will read that I can make minimum stones if I put the one inert stone and eight minimum dust into the attached inventory attached inventory right 
And if I take all of this out and stick it away in the AE system over here, right? Smack that away. The reason I'm using eight, cancel that. Uh, the reason I'm only putting eight in there is so that uh, five, is it? Yeah, I'm not making a full eight because I don't want it actually to work. Minimum dust one. Oh, it sent some more minimum dust because it was waiting for some more, innit? Yeah, and look, it put it straight in the top there. So it doesn't know which slot to put it in. So what I'm intending on doing is making one spare. Because it's only ever going to use eight. And if it's going to send eight, there'll be nine. So the eight go in there, and the stone goes in there. Then the eight get used up, and the stone gets used up, leaving the one there still. For the next time I ask for it, it'll put the stone there, and the minimum dust there. Right? Test it out a few times. I've checked a couple of times myself. Uh, but now, this has no crafting that it wants to do. Uh, this is currently sitting, standing by, waiting for something to happen. I can take blaze rods out and it should auto-refill. Yeah, just did. There we go. Auto-refill with blaze rods so that it'll never run out of fuel. And then if I look down, I've got my now crafting recipe there. It's available there. I've got other stuff in my crafting area, right? I've got uh, a load of bits and pieces in here and a load of bits and pieces in here, but no minimum stones. The only minimum stone crafting recipe is that one that I've just put in that interface. And the AE system allows me to remotely craft it through that interface. So if I now say craft one, it should take the minimum dust and the stone, the inert stone, and put it into here in the correct slots. If there was eight dust it would have taken the eight dust if i take three more let's take all four out it will now be stuck on needing four more dust to go into there right if i put the four more dust in there it's then satisfied but it hasn't received the item yet so it's still still sitting there in processing crafting uh, but this has put it straight back into there so I think I've found my solution. I take out all but one and leave that one in there always so it knows where to put the dust and the stone. And it will try and put eight dust and one stone in every time I ask it to craft me a minimum stone. Now I don't know yet if the extraction method is going to work. I don't know if when it's made this import bus is going to actually pull it out. But at the minute, this import bus is not pulling anything else out. So the import bus should, in theory, only be pulling from that slot. Uh, the next thing I need to do is sort it out so that it will automatically craft the uh, stones for me. Because I've got an inert stone there. I need to make it so that it will automatically craft those. So that's something that I need to actually add into my uh, crafting cube let's put that there that there that there to remind me what i've got make another one clear that so that was all four corners that was north south east west that in the middle makes one of those in code take that and stick that into here uh let's put it on the next page because it's random stuff in it put that into there okay so now if it hasn't got the correct thing, let's see, have I got smooth stone in there? That's a, that's a good thing first, check good smooth stone. Yeah, I've got enough smooth stone. So now I can craft uh, inert stones and I can craft minimum stones, right? So let's put those four in there. Let's keep the inert stones out. At the minute I've got none in my system, they're both out here. I'm going to end up with far too many inert stones, but it's okay. And this thing is set up to craft items when needed while exporting so it knows it needs a inert stone it will craft that inert stone and place it in there uh, via this method okay so let's let's just check again let's clear that off right so it's got no no crafting at the moment let's call it up and say craft me one of those begin so we should see that the dust is all gone out of my AE system. The inert stone's there now. Should have moved. It's crafted an inert stone. 
but it should take it out of the AE system and dump it over here. It's moved the dust over there. It's probably waiting for four more dust. So let's put the dust in. Because we're gonna we're gonna work on putting dust in there next. So put the dust in. And now does it send the other four dust and the stone that it crafted? Yes. Now I've got a third stone. But that's by the by. So if I had a full eight dust in there, it would have crafted the stone and put the dust in to start this off to give me what I'm after. Right, so now I've got to make the dust automated, which is in these things with diamonds. So I will start derping around with a calcinator and some AE next door and try and figure that one out. All right, well, that seemed a bit too easy. Um, I've got no control over it at the moment. That's potentially a problem. I've got no control over it. But all I've got here is another export bus on the underside exporting the blaze rods so that it fills the fuel slot. Right, so we're filling the fuel slot in the same way again. I put them side by side because I wanted to link them all into this arm of the AE system. I put a storage bus on there, right? And the storage bus is set to extract only, so it won't try and put anything into the calcinator, okay? Um, so it's it's registering how much minimum minimum dust we've got in the calcinator, okay? And I had to extract my diamonds before it did them all, so I've got eight sitting in there, and this is exporting diamonds from the AE system directly into the calcinator. So now, whenever the pig farm makes a diamond, the first place it will try and go is it will try and keep a stack of 64 in here. And it will have a stack of minimum dust as well. So we just saw another one got produced as the pigmen produced another diamond for us. Uh, I think I'm going to put these diamonds away in there because I don't want to use all my diamonds up. I don't want to come back and have no diamonds. But this is now reading that we've got... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Actually, I could turn the diamond back into uh, anything, couldn't I? So, where's it reading it? Where's it showing me? There we go. 14 minimum dust. Minium dust in there, okay? So we've got 14 minium dust in the system. And that's 9 in there. And presumably, I've got a few that I threw in there itself. I've got the one that I keep in there, but the AE system doesn't know about that one. So now... So, 9 in there? I thought I had 14 in there a minute ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's okay. So, now, if we check down here, I've got nothing currently in crafting. If I go down, and this is the be all and end all of the system, right? If this works, then we have an auto-crafting minimum stone sorted. Begin. Now, let's, uh, let's put... Minimum stone, and let's see. We lost some of the minimum dust. We had 14. Oh, there's a stone. Awesome. Awesome. It worked. Automated the minimum stone in this little compact AE network device thingy. So this export bus must have worked to remove that. This must have worked to keep just one left in there, meaning nine would go in and one stone. Bloody, bloody, blah. Look at that. Awesomely cool. Okay, so now I can throw that in there, that in there, that in there, that in there. Okay. And these will just sit in there. So let's put them in them again. Right, so I've got two two sit in there. So when Lewis comes along to get one, get two. If we've run out, then we craft them. But there's always going to be one in there for us to use. And I'm going to be using these in other minimum stone recipes right so uses of the minimum stone we've got a fair bit of stuff i mean i've got a lot of sticks that i might make into wood planks i've got a then a lot of wood planks that i can turn into wood logs i've got a lot of wood logs that i can turn into obsidian and then i can turn obsidian into iron so i can make iron from them and iron can be made into gold and gold can be made into diamonds <laughs> 
So there's a whole wealth of things I can do from the witch farm as well. Not only have I got all the sticks I need to make all the frames I need for redstone in motion, but with 4,000 sticks, I could make a load of wood, make a load of uh, obsidian, make a load of iron, make a load of gold, and make a load of diamonds. So iron, gold, and diamonds shouldn't be a problem so long as I've got a witch farm running and a zombie pigman thingy running. I can make all the iron I want out of sticks using uh, equivalent exchange three. <laughs> That's the next thing I'm going to work on. Uh, it's not as hard as using these things here to make the stuff happen because I can just use the minimum stones and get myself a blueprint for it, a schematic, and use a cyclic assembler like this to make sticks into uh, wood, wood planks into wood logs, and wood logs into obsidian, and obsidian into iron. I could also just have an obsidian generator as well running as well, but yeah, we need the lava for that. So yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned something from it. Uh, that's the end of this episode. Um, I could potentially set this up in a small tutorial for my automation series if you want it. Uh, I can show you how to set it up again in the automation series. Uh, but this is now Lewis and Nemson's Done in 60 Days Minima Stone Automation Creation System. Thank you very much and goodbye. Thank you.